Hi everybody, my name is Maria and I'm excited to talk to you today about how we can leverage voluntary carbon markets to invest in nature. A bit about me, I'm also a, joint, a dual MBA and master's student here. I, before Stanford, I spent years investing in a wide range of industries and I used to be a concert pianist. I spent the past years thinking about different ways how we can scale up private capital to fund ambitious climate solutions. And in my spare time, I'm very passionate about thinking about how we can use the intersection of innovation, um, capitalism, and purpose to protect nature. So the agenda for today, very quickly, is to go through very, uh, what nature-based solutions are, where we stand today in terms of financing, then we shift on to voluntary carbon markets. Uh, I'll present my findings of where the voluntary carbon markets are today, the gaps are, and then suggest solutions for future, how we can leverage voluntary carbon markets to uh, fund nature-based solutions. So, very, so I started this research broadly with a very broad question. How can we invest more in nature-based solutions? With nature-based solutions being actions that act to restore, manage, and sustain ecosystems for the purpose of uh, preventing climate change and disaster with the benefits that also benefit biodiversity and human health. Here are some examples that include restoring and protecting forests, protecting habitats, and enhancing agriculture. And most recently, in the past few years, we have seen also the emergence of new solutions that use negative carbon emissions to um, use nature to uh, construct uh, CO2 from uh, the air. Uh, according to IPCC, in the next couple of years, we will need to uh, fund uh, nature-based solutions by up to four trillion. Uh, however, today, there is an 80% gap to get there. Today, primarily, these nature-based solutions are funded by public capital, which typically come in the form of grants and low-interest uh, loans from governments and development finance institutions, primarily to protect biodiversity and forests. And to some smaller extent, we have seen private actors come in and especially fund regenerative agriculture solutions, where we have seen some promise of uh, commercial, commercialization in business models. And most recently, we have seen a new funding mechanism in form of voluntary carbon markets that has arrived, which is today predominantly used by uh, big corporates to offset their carbon removal. Very briefly, what is voluntary carbon markets? I chose to focus on that because I believe that it could be the next uh, future way to fund nature-based solutions. Today, voluntary carbon market is a decentralized market in which actors can buy and sell carbon offsets, which typically represent one metric ton of reduced, avoided, and removed GHG emissions. It is valued at $2 billion, but is predicted to, re to exponentially increase in the next couple of years. In the past year, voluntary carbon markets have represented carbon avoidance uh, projects, which most often, over 90% of the time, include forest conservation. These are cheap um, carbon markets that cost a couple of dollars. But we have seen most recently innovation in this space. We're increasingly more projects now focus on carbon removal on, you know, on topics such as soil carbon, reforestation, and even technology-based solutions such as direct air capture. Uh, a, briefly an overview, voluntary carbon markets is a growing, uh, a growing um, market and is largely decentralized and is voluntary by word. The key industry players are on one hand, we have the standard setters, which typically are NGOs. They propose the kind of the framework and the guidance for how the, the carbon credits should be structured. Then we have the project developers who, um, who set the pricing and the structure of each cred uh, credits, and they tend to be both profits, nonprofits, and profits. And then we have registries, which typically are actually employed by project developers mm. to give kind of an okay of each credit. And then we have an increasing number of marketplaces, which are startups that have developed um, platforms online for trading, and finding different uh, credits. Uh, and finally, this whole market is driven today by big corporates, which tend to be the buyers, which get the carbon uh, credits to offset their own emissions and achieve their ESG goals. 
as you probably have known, in the last year, the market has faced heavy scrutiny due to um, a report is being said that, for instance, in certain cases, uh, certain um, project developers double counted different projects or they have sold projects and the actual climate impact of those is very um, dubious. So the climate science behind them is false, which has led a lot of um, a lot of industry players to kind of doubt the future of this industry. This, I've also interviewed 20 industry participants across the board, and, um, the, and the number one feedback I keep hearing is from four, of my, uh, from four of my interviewees. It's a wild, wild west out there. Uh, the interviewees cite um, the lack of transparency the lack of pricing, kind of a, you know centralized pricing structure, and lack of um, lack of uh, 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 lack of structure, legal structure, and policy makers in the space as a key reasons for their, for this sector not being growing and kind of thriving as it is said to be. Uh, in my, I believe that even though the voluntary carbon market system is, um, is, uh, has a lot to wish for, we, sh we should reconstruct the whole industry and we should focus on three key areas. On one hand, we need to really encourage our policy makers to work with local governments to set mandatory CO2 reduction targets for the buyers and for them to encourage them to buy offsets. We need to um, implement one single industry standard for measuring and verifying carbon credits, and we need to increase compliance efforts with the credit markets. On the second hand, we need to encourage project developers to fund more high integrity uh, projects such as carbon removal, and more importantly, we need to um, encourage them to produce monitoring, reporting, and verification processes, so each credit over time, we can see how it has performed, especially against um, the climate criteria. And finally, we need to create ideally one marketplace which ha is, has full transparency, so we, uh, so that it's a decentralized trading performance where you can find all of the carbon credits in one place, and there is liquidity, so you can trade and purchase different uh, credits. In this way, that will instill confidence in the system. Perhaps once all these three steps have been um, taken, then we can use the voluntary mar uh, carbon markets to invest in nature-based solutions on a large scale and hopefully one day fund the, uh, the funding gap. Thank you so much. Within nature-based solutions, the two big questions that often come up are additionality and permanence. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a preference within nature-based solutions that you think are better suited to addressing those, or how have you thought about those two issues? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think both of them are very important, and ideally you should consider both. I would say, firstly, I'd like to think about permanence and really focus on solutions where uh, we really preserve and make sure that over time the ecosystems are protected and they're thriving and actually are being used to uh, you know, re um, restore CO2 and then focus on additionality, I'd say. I think it was like three or four days ago at COP, there was a release for an alternative mechanism to fund nature-based uh, solutions, um, really around this idea of prote protecting existing forests. So like the whole mm -hmm. concept was for carbon markets, we should only look at removals and we should have a different financing mechanism for avoidance. How do you think about that? Just curious. Yeah, I think if we can come up with a completely new mechanism to fund carbon removals, that would be great. I think right now there's a lot of new technologies that are coming out, like DAC, CCUS, like enhanced weathering, and they all need kind of a market. They need somebody to buy them. That would be great. I think based on what I've seen in this research, I focused on this existing mechanism and how we can use that to fund uh, carbon removal. So I think in, because we don't have a lot of time to fight climate change, we should focus on both approaches and see which one is going to kind of become a reality first. 
Thank you. Great presentation. You mentioned three different stakeholders at the very end of who you yeah. would like to move first and, and get us to a better carbon market. In your ideal world, what would be the first action taken to get us substantially closer to having a functional system? Um, yeah, I see that point one, definitely uh, the policymakers. I think we just need to have somebody or some kind of institutional body to say, okay, here, here are the rules like across the board, like you all need to comply to this. I think what happens now is we have that institutional standard body, which is a nonprofit. Uh, they have something, but nobody's just listening to them. So we need to have some, uh, you know, super governmental authority that backs these standards. And then only if that happens, I think, then the other dominoes will fall. And do you mind a follow up? Yeah. If each of us could do one thing to encourage that behavior, is there a way for us to take part in encouraging policymakers to do that? Yeah, great question. I actually thought a lot about that. I think especially as students as, at a place like Stanford, we could come together and write kind of a joint letter, like tens, hundreds of us, with kind of a detailed, you know, couple of page recommendation of how the voluntary carbon markets need to be restructured, and then get that sign off, maybe get the support from professors and kind of publish that with um, you know, news, uh, news outlets and then also send it to the uh, um, policymakers. I think that would be great stuff. 